the documentation of this process ultimately it's critical as part of the value chain so my question there is what has been the the experience when it comes to documenting these processes i'm also joined by camelia who could also give some comments on that the process of documenting the lessons from this entire process So um, thanks, Tabo, and uh, good morning, colleagues, uh, to everybody um, who's listening on the line. Um, so I think th an important um, aspect around documenting the lessons is basically the discussion we had yesterday, where um, I think all nine provinces presented uh, what happened last year in response to the COVID-19. Um, so I, I think it, it's fair to say that there was a fair amount of overlap um, and, and convergence in terms of the things that each of the provinces did. And I think the idea for a learning network of this nature is precisely based on that. You know, there are, I think as Ismail was saying in his presentation, that we've got nine provincial offices of the Premier, all with the, the very same mandate and responsibility in terms of making sure that government meets its priorities. And, um, and all of us are essentially facing the same challenges. So it would only make sense for us to, to collaborate and make sure that we learn from each other uh, instead of all of us kind of starting from scratch all the time and making the same mistakes. We should be learning um, from each other and, and that's really the, the, purposes, the purpose of this. So um, I think COVID-19 probably kind of intensified the need for such a learning network because it showed us that, you know, a crisis can happen at any time and often we are not prepared. Uh, we are not ready to respond. Um, and that's where we actually need to pull our resources and to work together, um, you know, to be able to successfully respond to something like that. So I think for me, it, it, you know, to, it has started, the work has started. We all reflected on what the lessons were that has come out of the, the, the process. I think we've all realized the importance of documenting and writing up uh, the research. I think we all recognized the, and acknowledged the, the value of working um, with in particular the, the researchers and the academics, you know, that, that probably have access to a lot more. Um, of this kind of work and, and experts in particular fields. So, um, and, and of course we know that that pool is limited. So if each of us go separately as the nine provinces constantly to the same pool of experts, the same academics, for example, you know, the, uh, I, th I think that pool will become depleted, whereas we could all be, you know, capitalizing on working together and sharing um, the, the resources. So I, I, w I would leave it at that, Chair. I think that, th that for me is the start of why we need to, to consider a network um, of this nature. And, and as Gauteng, we had offered to kind of host this discussion today, but we really really hoping um, to get some feedback from the other provinces, um, you know, to, to just to get an, a better understanding of what's happening there and how we can learn from what other provinces are doing. So today is really a start of a, an ongoing conversation. Um, thank you, Chair. Great. Thank you very much, Kamel. Before I give Ismail an opportunity to also give some comment, I need to ask the attendees, please put in, type in your comments as well as questions. If you've got questions for, for Ismail, for his presentation, we we'll appreciate that. But most importantly, some comments, please. Over to you, Ismail. Yeah, I think Kamal has been quite comprehensive. Uh, but I, I think, you know, beyond just COVID, we need to look at key service delivery issues. So <clears throat> the province, whether it's education, whether it's human settlements, um, you know, we all have the same functions and mandate, as Kamal indicates. So What's working? What's not working? And again, you know, we don't, uh, we don't need to go to other countries to learn from them. Um, although traveling is nice, but uh, it's probably not going to happen with COVID in the near future. But I think going to our partner provinces and just kind of seeing what works with them and for them and, and what doesn't work. Um, I, I think we, we must in an important learning opportunity as provinces mm -hmm. uh, to basically kind of share these lessons amongst ourselves. Um, you know, and I think for the Office of the Premier in particular, I think if you look at the line departments, there's a lot of collaboration, there's MinMAC forums where they get an opportunity to talk to each other. 
But I think as the office of the Premier, there isn't that many opportunities for us to do that. And, and that's the motivation for actually starting this discussion and basically seeing the appetite and what other provinces think. Thanks. Okay. Thank you for those comments. It might be too early for me to ask this question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. We've been talking a lot about adaptive governance. And obviously, whatever is being documented today, it's based on what is prevailing currently. But we know that could easily change in the next six months, given that we have entered phase, uh, wave, third wave. Things can change. So what are some of the things you're already thinking about when it comes to updating that documentation going forward? Well, I think maybe the next presentation is going to be crucial because they're going to explore precisely the concept of adaptive governance and how we've basically uh, adapted as the province to deal with this COVID crisis. Mm. But again, you know, when we're dealing with complex problems, whether it's youth unemployment, whether it's crime, we need that adaptability to work across departments, across spheres, to bring in civil society, to bring in the private sector. Mm -hmm. So again, it's, it's, I think we shouldn't only think about adaptive governance when we have a crisis. Um, I mean, we could argue youth unemployment is a crisis. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, crime is a crisis. The environment, issues in the environment. They, these are modern day crises we face on a daily basis. Yeah. And, and how, again, I think Mdu mentioned, government can't do this alone. And how do we bring in partners? How do we work with others to address these issues? Great. Thank you very much. That gives us then an opportunity to move to our next session.